All right. So we're all Webinar starting. started. People are starting to come in. Yep. Um, and um, you have a good program tonight. Yep. Where are you going? Me? Yeah. I um I'm clipping my um thing that I have to say underneath my webcam so that it'll look like I'm looking and staring directly into the webcam while I'm reading. But see. instead of having it on another screen or down like this or something like that, I can just look straight ahead. After, and hopefully after it doesn't two, fall. After two years of Zoom, Bob, you're a pro at this. Yeah. yeah. I, well, this is the first time I, I it dawned on me today. It's like, huh, why don't I just clip it up there? <laughs> and then I don't have to do this. That's I don't have to right. hold anything. And um, Eureka, yeah, Eureka, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, I have to tell you, Bob, that I was just at the NJLA conference and somebody actually came up to me and they said, You know what? We really love your and Bob, your and Bob's witty banter. And I was like, You do? And they're like, Yes, we like your witty banter. I was witty like, oh, banter. I don't know how witty it is, but, but it's certainly banter in the beginning. I, I told you guys before, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I didn't say it for nothing. Um, okay, so um, there, now there was a good amount of people signed up for this. People may filter in um, afterwards, but I think we have the people um, in here now that, um, you know, we have a, a critical mass of, of people. So um, I'm going to uh, get started um, if we have a lot to cover um, in the next hour. So uh, hello and welcome to the June Directors and Trustees check-in. I am your host, Bob Keith, and I'm joined tonight by Michelle Stricker. Say hi, Michelle. Hi, hi everyone. And Pat Pavlak. Hi everybody. And before we introduce our guests for this evening, I just wanted to remind everyone that if you have a question for the presenters, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to enter your question. Use the chat button to talk to us and with your, with, amongst yourselves. Um, with that out of the way, let's introduce our guests. Uh, Ralph Bingham began his tenure as ex Executive Director of Library Link NJ in July, 2021 after serving as director of the Gloucester County Library System. Before being appointed to director of GCLS in 2018, Ralph served as head of reference and digital services after having worked in multiple roles at GCLS for more than 20 years. Over the past decade, Ralph has served on numerous statewide task forces and advisory groups, including Top Cats as chair, the LLNJ Executive Board, LLNJ Delivery Task Force, Mentor NJ Task Force, NGSL LSDA Advisory Council, NGSL Database Advisory Committee, NGSL Statewide Services Task Force, New Jersey Makers Day Board, and various NJLA sections and committees. In June 2022, Ralph received the NJLA Librarian of the Year Award. And after all of those things, if you didn't get Librarian of the Year, something's wrong, right? I mean, oh, that's a lot of stuff that you're working on. You um, didn't, you you actually read the whole thing. Thank you. I, I did. You gave it to me. Hi, so. everybody. <laughs> um, Ola, I didn't ask you how you pronounced your last name. Is it Mejia? It is. Very good. There you go. Uh, Orla Mejia is head of interlibrary services for Rutgers University Libraries with over 21 years of experience with interlibrary loan. Orla is originally from Ireland and worked in the corporate world when she first arrived in the United States. She entered into academia by way of Princeton University and has been with Rutgers for over 11 years now. Uh, she loves that interlibrary loan is complex and ever-changing, even if it is sometimes one of those services that sometimes flies with, under the radar. And last, but certainly not least, Steve Lorenz is the reference supervisor at the Newark Public Library. And in case you, um, whoop, my, there we go. That's better. Um, we are going to be talking, in case you haven't noticed, we're going to be talking about statewide services tonight. Um, our first speaker is uh, Orla, and she is going to share her screen and um, I hope to give us her wisdom. Oh. <laughs> yes. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to mute while you, um, while you uh, speak, so I recommend the other speakers do that as well. Okay. Um, in case my dog starts barking again. 
Oh, thanks a million, Bob, and we don't like dogs. <laughs> and it's it's a pleasure to join everyone this evening. Um, I was glad to be asked, and I'm here just to talk a little bit about Rutgers University Libraries and more specifically how we serve our New Jersey partners through interlibrary loan services. So the award that we receive supports the provision of interlibrary loan services to our partner libraries, and we receive interlibrary loan requests through many different services. You see the majority of them on the screen. Or, um, Orla, you're not sharing your screen yet. Oh, I did. Let's try this again. I apologize. It's okay. No, no, don't worry. There we go. Perfect. There it is. Uh, all right. There it nice. is. Nice. Good nice. job. We get Sorry, right, take your time. We have plenty of time. There we go. I think we're in good shape now. Here's hoping. All right, good. We're just going to. It's showing differently on both sides. We see the full slide, not the um, presenter view or anything like that. Yeah, it's just a shame that I can't see it on my side. So if you don't mind, I'm so sorry. No problem. Let me just reshare it. That sounds great. And then now we're now we're talking. Share screen two. And it's gone again. Hmm. This this work. Now, there, there we go. There you go. Now are. we're cooking on all cylinders. You got it. I you got it. No problem. So these are the services that we receive interlibrary loan services, um, interlibrary loan requests through. Um, the majority of our requests come through OCLC, and we use Iliad as our interlibrary loan platform. Um, through integration, we get requests from Jersey Cat, Rabbit ILL, DocLine, and there are two members of Palsy who are New Jersey libraries um they are rowan and seton hall that we receive that part of the palsy consortium and we receive requests through their easy borrow system now we recognize that sometimes libraries have difficulties placing requests through jersey cat because sometimes our more specialized items can't easily be found using the z3950 protocol or um they're automatically rejected for some reason so we always recommend that using the blank request in Jersey Cat, or libraries can actually place requests directly to us through our Iliad. Um, and this is a service that quite a number of the high school libraries and the public libraries use um, when they can't find something, or if they're looking for something specific like microfilms, that's hard to request through Jersey Cat. So organizationally, we're set up on three main campuses. Uh, we've got the New Brunswick campus, Newark, and Camden. Um, on the New Brunswick campus, we have many libraries that cover a broad spectrum of specialties. Holdings include East Asian and the Art Museum, special collections and university archives. Math and physics has astronomy and um, labor relations. So lots of different disciplines are covered there. The annex is an off-site location. It is closed stacks. It houses about one and a half million volumes in a storage, in a temperature controlled storage. Um, and this is some of our more infrequently used and fragile periodicals and monographs, along with government documents and microfilms. So it's quite an interesting place to be. It's a bit like Indiana Jones. On the Newark campus, we have Dana Library, and they are renowned for the services and unique collections that they offer, as well as expertise and state-of-the-art technologies into the community. And this is also where the Institute of Jazz Studies is located. Then we have three health science libraries located in New Brunswick and in Newark. And one of the nice little interesting fact is that the Smith Library has a collection, the history of medicine, and it is the only collection in the state that's entirely devoted to providing resources on the history of medicine in New Jersey. And then down in Camden, we have Robeson Library. And notably, Robeson provides library services for um, almost 2,500 students that are on the Camden campus of Camden County College and Rowan University. 
So they provide that. And then in 2019, the two law libraries, one on Newark and one in Camden, they integrated their holdings into our catalog. So that had a wonderful trickle down effect that it made their uh, holdings a lot more accessible to our communities too. So in order to make this all work, we have our central services. And the central services provide support to all of the libraries on all of the campuses. And it includes, you know, those boring things like acquisitions and cataloging, computing and um, system support. But I think the most important one is ILL, maybe a little biased. So interlibrary loan services. We are in place to not only get materials for our patrons, from other locations, but also to provide our materials to other libraries, both electronically and physically. So a little bit about our collections. We have close to 6 million unique titles, a lot of duplicity in there also, um, you know, multiple copies of the same title, but we have over 5.8 million unique titles. And I think everybody, we, we're almost tired of hearing it that the past two years have been challenging for every organization, but the pandemic has brought some unexpected improvements to our collection and the infrastructure, and it proves to be beneficial well into the future. The rapid, the, the fact that we had to rapidly shift to accommodate remote instruction and online provision of our services, it motivated us. And we were able to significantly expand our electronic holdings, and it really forced us to rethink how we could support our patrons and partners around the world, no matter where they are. So we were able to purchase tens of thousands of ebooks and several major backfile purchases. And one of the ways that we could do that was to leverage the relationships that we have in, through various consortia, like the Big Ten Academic Alliance or Shares or Palsy. So this increased our purchasing power and it allowed us to participate in transformative buying agreements to further increase the resources that we were able to provide to everyone else. And we have some really amazing unique collections like our Roman coins in our special collections department. But um, one of the wonderful things that we, what we did was we started a New Jersey digital newspaper project. And this was an effort to put over 100,000 pages of local New Jersey news online. And it's actually available at the Library of Congress's um, Chronicling America website. Another example of some unique items that we would have is that in 2018, we were able to acquire the collections of jazz composer and band leader Count Basie, who was born in Red Bank, New Jersey. And they, in, in, at the Institute of Jazz Studies, they have embarked on a multi-year preservation and digitization project. So by able, being able to provide those digitally makes it more widely available to everyone. And I think during the pandemic, a lot of people started de delving into things that they may not ordinarily, ordinarily have done. So one thing that struck me was the whole fad about genealogical studies and our special collections and university archives gene genealogical holdings provide a really rich source of information on New Jersey family history. And the bulk of the records have been deposited by the Genealogical Society of New Jersey and the New Jersey State Society of Daughters of the American Revolution. So it's really a unique resource. And it's among um, interesting because the most frequently used portions of it are the cemetery inscriptions and the extensive notes that were compiled by professional geneal genealogists of the state's early families. And some of them are really obscure. So the fact that they get so many heads is, is really interesting to me. So like I said, we've all experienced that hardship. And I think we've all come to know what that uh, lovely virus looks like. Over the past two years, our online presence has most definitely increased exponentially. It's made us much more accessible to our patrons and partners wherever they are. And in the last year, our virtual reference service answered more than 27,000 questions, which was about a 60% increase from previous years. 
And the libraries also provided dozens of online workshops. And while the Rutgers University library sites were physically closed from March 2020 to July 2020, our central interlibrary loan staff, so I'm really proud to say this, that you know our staff were on site and we were able to remain fully functional and that allowed Rutgers University libraries to continue to fill requests coming in from our robust collection of electronic resources. So of course, um, lending physical materials was a little bit more difficult because our libraries weren't staffed. But in August of 2020, a, along came our RUL staff and they returned to their posts and the branch libraries throughout the state were able to resume scanning from print and providing chapters and uh, articles from periodicals. So I think we just kept going and we continue to keep going. So it's onward and upward from here. Um, we consistently strive to provide a, a wide range of valued resources, and we do rely on the support of the New Jersey State Library to do that. Rutgers University Libraries looks forward to returning to a pre-pandemic level of activity, and we're fully committed to a future of continued service, and we really appreciate the partnership that we have with our fellow New Jersey Libraries. Thank you. Thank you so much, much Lola. No problem. So, I'm happy to answer any questions that may have come through. Sure. Um, there, there's no questions yet, but I think I, I, I kind of mentioned for people to put their questions in and then uh, we'll, um, you know, uh, pose them to the panel at the end. Perfect. Um, and, um, but, but again, thank you very much. Um, there's a lot of good information um, about how Rutgers uh, Library serves the rest of the rest of the state. Um, so our next speaker is uh, Steve Lorenz from New York, New York, New York Public Library. Sorry, I can't get to that. You're, you're still muted there. Gotcha. Sorry about that. No worries. Uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, my name is Steve Lorenz. And as Bob said, when he introduced me, I'm the reference supervisor at Newark Public Library. And I should say that my introduction was quite a bit shorter than Ralph's and Dorla's because they are just way more esteemed than I am. And, and also because uh, this position that I have is my first in the great state of New Jersey, which is my home state, but uh, I've been other places in between, um, you know, when I was like 18 or so. Um, I have previously worked at libraries in Massachusetts, in North Carolina, and most recently in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, um, at which time I was actually living in, in South Jersey. Um, uh, and then I recently uh, moved to, to Newark when I got this position. And it, I have to say it is my pleasure to speak before uh, this meeting of library directors and library trustees this, this evening in a meeting that's hosted by the New Jersey State Library. So I'm going to speak to you today a little bit about the statewide reference services that Newark Public Library provides in order to directly assist New Jersey librarians. And, and at the conclusion of my presentation or any time in between, although I probably won't see the, the chat, um, I'll give you a chance to ask any questions that you might have. Um, and I'll try to address those uh, at the end. Um, so you can think of Newark's statewide services as being broken into three different areas. Um, our reference department, for which I work, um, our New Jersey room, and government documents. Um, in all, last year, Newark Public Library librarians in one of these three departments answered uh, 1,609 statewide reference questions. Um, and these were either posed to us by librarians or library staff at New Jersey libraries or directly by patrons in New Jersey who do not call the Newark Public Library their home library. Um, so that's how we decide if something's a statewide reference question. Um, in the past year, there's been significant change in the reference department at Newark Public Library. Um, this includes, but is not limited to the retirement of uh, NPL's longtime head of reference. Uh, and also the recent retirement of another librarian who had been at NPL for 35 years or more. Um, I started in my role near the end of uh, September of 2021, and we also have a couple of new librarians on our team. 
and in the past several months, our uh, primary patent and trademark librarian left us, and that's part of our statewide services. So that's significant as well. Um, there hasn't been quite the same level of change in the New Jersey Information Center at, at New York Public Library. Uh, although a longtime librarian did retire recently, uh, Tom Engner has been in charge of uh, the New Jersey room since 2019, and he's been at the library since 2010. Uh, and the New Jersey room has continued to provide the same steady service to New Jersey librarians and patrons all along. Um, and our government documents librarian, Laura Sars, does double duty as the head of technical services for NPL, uh, but she's been in government documents and uh, about government documents librarian at NPL for more than 10 years. Um, so one thing that happened not long after I started at NPL last fall was that a couple of people from the state library's marketing department came to Newark to gather information, take some photos and video and in order to help promote our statewide services. I think there was a sense that not enough New Jersey librarians knew about our services and it would maybe help if the state library assisted in promoting these, the things that we do. So that when a New Jersey librarian found themselves confronted with say a uh, request for sheet music they didn't have or an art mystery or an obituary or some kind of genealogical puzzle, they would know that they could turn to us. Um, so toward that end, uh, Tiffany McClary and Julia Giantamasi of the State Library came to Newark last fall to take pictures and video of our collections, talk with staff about our statewide services, um, about what we do and what we can provide. And they, and then I followed up with them afterwards about their ideas for a social media campaign highlighting our statewide services. And Julia also told me that she would she would start that campaign in earnest at the beginning of calendar year 2022. Uh, and all of that has resulted in a wonderfully informative blog post by Julia that de details the resources we have and the services we can provide to New Jersey librarians, including our patent and trademark resources and accessing uh, US government documents. Um, additionally, the the State Library Instagram and Facebook pages have each featured one specific aspect of our service per month since the year has started. Um, and Julia and I have worked together to pr produce a trifold brochure and a one sheet. So I'm going to hold up the brochure right now. And I actually shared it in the chat, like right at the beginning of the meeting. Um, so you can actually open that up. It's a PDF. Uh, doesn't have any uh, viruses or anything like that. It's not going to um, bother your computer at all. Um, so that's that's this brochure, um, and it, it looks really good. Uh, all credit goes to to Julia for that. And then she also created a um, a one sheet for us, which has a lot of the same information, but is just shorter and uh, kind of punchier. Um, so I will uh, share both of those again in the chat uh, when, when I'm all done here. We've also updated the statewide reference service uh, page on the New Jersey, uh, on, the, on the State Library website. And I can actually add that to the chat right now. Hold on, just give me a second. So that will take you to that, to that page if you wanted to go to it. Um, the one sheet and this, this page give you a good sense of the kinds of questions that we can help with and the resources that we have. So one thing I might you might ask after I say all of this about the uh, promotion is, has it helped? Um, so we can't point to a massive, massive uptick in overall use of our statewide services since the social media campaign was inaugurated. But I can say that the social media posts have had a lot of engagement. And in the past several months, we have been contacted by at least 12 New Jersey libraries that we hadn't been contacted by ever before. And we know that because we're, we had to add them to our list of uh, all the libraries in, on our statistic page. Um, and we've also had more questions from several libraries who have used us very infrequently before. Um, I think as much as anything, the blog and the social media campaign kind of helps plant a seed in the mind of librarians and, and hopefully they'll turn to us when, when, they, when they need us in their, their time of desperate need. Um, 
the biggest thing that we want to impart and the biggest thing that I want you to take away today, and I think the reason that Bob has us on, um, is for New Jersey librarians to know that we're here to help with some specialized types of questions. Um, so that's, that's why I'm here. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about some of the kind of questions that we answer in each of those uh, three different places. So of all of our different areas of statewide reference service, uh, art, business, music, patents and trademarks, government documents, New and New Jersey history, the New Jersey room consistently leads the way in the number of questions answered and the number of libraries served. Um, while I don't work in the New Jersey room myself, I'm aware of the kinds of questions that they handle. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about those now. Um, the Charles F. Cummings New Jersey Information Center answered 1,010 statewide reference questions in 2021, which is actually more than in 2019, the year before the pandemic. Uh, and the questions came from across the state, from Belleville to Burlington County to Vineland and beyond. Um, the questions posed to the New Jersey room staff are heavily focused on genealogy and local history, uh, but really they'll answer any New Jersey related question. Uh, they provide obituaries and city, city directory lookups to people working on their family history. They help people researching the histories of homes or properties. They help college students with class projects, PhD candidates working on dissertations and academics researching scholarly, pap scholarly papers. Um, the extensive photo collections in the New Jersey room are really great. And if you ever have a chance to come to Newark uh, Library, you know, take a look around, we have a wonderful building, go up to the New Jersey room and, and just uh, ask to see um, some of the photos up there because they're, they're just great. Uh, they're actually regularly mined by filmmakers, authors, and, and TV producers. Photos from our collection recently appeared in the New York Times and on uh, the New Jersey PBS. And in the past, they've appeared on CBS Sunday Morning 2020 and other news programs. Um, so a couple of examples of recent questions answered, answered by New Jersey room staff. Um, got some praise for someone researching their genealogy and the person uh, said, thank you so much for this. You have helped us learn about a family member that we knew nothing about until three weeks ago. This is such a terrific community service offered by the library. Uh, we also help with research for an article in the most recent issue of Philip Roth Studies. The article um, was, was by Stuart, Stuart Miller of the University of Connecticut. Um, New Jersey PBS is working on a documentary about the 1959 proposal to build an airport on the site of the Great Swamp in Morris County. And Tom and Jeff in the New Jersey room both assisted a producer with articles and photos for the program. Uh, a patron in Cranford recently asked for historical information about a historically black neighborhood in Scotch Plains. And Beth in the New Jersey room sent the patron information from the Newark Evening News uh, Clippings Archive. Uh, a middle school teacher in Edison re requested information about the 1967 Newark Rebellion for one of her students. And Tom sent her a summary of all of our holdings, including links to material on our digital archive. And the student later contact, uh, contacted us to tell us how helpful the material had been for them. Uh, and a historic preservationist in Caldwell uh, visited to research the history of two historic buildings in her town. And Tom and Greg uh, both helped her find information in the Newark Evening News clippings archive, the information file, and the picture collection. So that's some of the stuff from the New Jersey room. Uh, besides the New Jersey Information Center, NPL has two other divisions which regularly field statewide questions, which are reference where I work and um, and we handle inquiries relating to art and music, business, and patents and trademarks. And then there's also the uh, US documents, which handles inquiries about government documents and publications. Uh, so one thing that I've noticed uh, since I've started at NPL is that it is, it is not perfect or uniform in how our statewide service is utilized, but I'll also say uh, that this is kind of to be expected and is, is absolutely fine. Um, so some libraries call or email us directly. Others give our number to their patrons who call or email us um, or, or even uh, use our chat function on our website. Um, it's supposed to be our practice to ask people where they are calling from or writing from, but with several new staff members in, in, in our mix, uh, including myself, 
I can say that that hasn't always been the case. So we've probably missed counting some number of statewide questions over the past uh, nine or 10 months or so. Um, although we are hoping to correct those oversights. Um, another thing is that some libraries know what our special areas of service are and what our specific resources are and other libraries and, and librarians don't really know what those are. And that kind of results in some libraries contacting us about subjects which we don't have special resources for. Um, but that being said, we all take our role as the statewide provider very seriously. And we always, always try to get, get to some kind of yes, some kind of a, an answer for a person, um, or a, at least a pathway toward an answer of some kind for those who contact us. Um, if a librarian comes to us, we're going to try to assist, even if what they're asking is not one of our specialized areas of, of reference. Um, so I thought I would take a little bit of time to share with you some, some more questions, some ones that we in the reference uh, department at NPL have fielded recently, uh, some of which show the, this little bit of unevenness and how we're utilized. Uh, so uh, a person recently, uh, fairly recently asked us, how old, how old is my aunt's Bible? Um, so we were contacted by a patron calling from Chatham, New Jersey. Um, and she wanted to know if she, we could tell her how old her aunt's Bible was and when it was printed. So she definitely had this perception that NPL was who to contact when you had such a question. And after a lot of digging, I was able to narrow down the, the probable publication date for her to a, within a three year period. Um, another question that we had very recently, um, do you have the Moody's Railroad Securities Manuals from 1928, 1930, 1934, and 1944? Why, yes, in fact, we do. Uh, and they're on microfilm. So I retrieved these uh, from our basement for the patron who was from Montclair, and he viewed them on our reader in the, uh, our microfilm reader in the New Jersey room. Uh, another question that we received recently uh, from a patron from New Brunswick, uh, she wanted to know how to find African-American financial advisors at large financial, financial institutions who might be receptive to investing in African-American causes. Again, so we have uh, business materials, um, but we don't necessarily have robust resources for finding answers to that inquiry, um, but I obliged her request and uh, she was very happy with what, what I was able to find for her. Um, Another person who uh, contacted us fairly recently, actually a couple of times, um, she was calling from Edison. Uh, she had been to the Metuchen Library and they had referred, a, re referred her to us. And she wanted to know what the rules and regulations are in New Jersey around the disposal of drywall, tiles, and asbestos. And um, so I was able to uh, find this for her and uh, you know, provide her with the information that she that she needed. Um, uh, another another question that we got, and and this is actually pretty common. I, I just bought some things at a yard sale, including this painting. Do you have any idea how much it's worth? Uh, we actually get this question a lot, or something like it. Um, and we got a couple of these kind of questions recently from Bayonne um, that were in this realm. They're sometimes challenging and sometimes a lot of fun. Uh, even if we can only give a very rough estimate based on recent auction prices for similar kind of artworks. So we don't give anyone like, it's worth exactly this amount, um, but we give them kind of a, a sense of what it might be worth given uh, recent uh, auction sales. Um, another question that we got was, uh, a person wanted to know if uh, an artwork was their grandfather's original work. So a librarian contacted us um, and ask, asked if we could tell her if a painting that one of their patrons uh, grandfather made was a copy of another painting or if it was an original. Um, the grandfather who, who was deceased had made copies of other paintings and they listed some of the artists that they had copied. Um, but with, with all of the resources that we had both online and print um, for, such, for such a question, uh, this question was not one that was really answerable with any of those, um, short of the very kind of the 
a long shot of stumbling onto the original painting in, in a book. Um, so we, we were able to uh, say our, our resources can help us say with some degree of accuracy if a painting is real or who made it based on the signature um, or, who, or we might be able to say how much a similar painting sold for. But this one really was a riddle. Um, and, but in the end, it, it took a lot of poking around on the internet um, rather than on our subscription databases or our beautiful, beautiful art books of which we have very, very many. Um, so it was internet uh, sleuthing and we were able to actually find the, the almost definitive inspiration for the grandfather's painting. So that, that all's well that ends well with that one. Um, so those are just some samples of some questions that we received recently. Uh, we continue to get a number of requests for sheet music from all over the state. For example, uh, librarians from East Brunswick, Monroe Township in Cape May, Mount Laurel uh, contact us fairly regularly for uh, sheet music requests. And we also get a lot of requests for industry profiles, so business type questions. We get patent research requests and all manner of questions from New Jersey librarians and their patrons. Uh, with, 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 all, with all manners of these kind of requests. We always approach it professionally and courteously and try to approach it with a dogged commitment to, to find something for them. Um, so now that I've talked quite a bit about NPL statewide services, I wanted to see if you had any questions for us. And like I said, I will share um, the, the brochure and the one page in, in the chat in just a moment. Uh, but I wanted to see if you had any questions for me. And if you don't, um, thank you so much for your time this evening. We uh, greatly enjoy the opportunity to continue to provide these statewide services to New Jersey libraries. And thank you very much, Steve. I really appreciate you uh, giving us all the details. Um, I have a comment for Steve, if, he's, if you have a minute, extra minute. Sure. Yep. Um, so Steve, I just wanted to tell you how I used your reference services several years ago. Um, and how great they were. Um, I was watching an old movie and in the movie they saw, they um, sang a couple of lines from I thought a very enchanting song that sounded like it was like an old, you know, a, an old song um, from maybe, you know, colonial times. And I called the newer public library reference and all I gave them was like a couple of lines from this song. That's all I could tell you was like, I knew like two word, you know, two lines of the song. Did they know what it was? And not only did they find the, you know, the name of the song, the, the, the lyrics to the song, they sent the sheet music to the song and I was able to like practice it and play it on the piano. So I thought that was pretty incredible that from just two lines of, you know, me remembering tech, you know, from the movies that you guys were able to, actually find um you know this old this old song from colonial days so it was great that, that's great uh i can't take any credit for that because i wasn't there if it was a couple years <laughs> ago but uh yeah we still try to provide the same service <laughs> excellent well like i said thank you very much um for giving us all the information about what newark does um to answer uh new jersey's questions um, I'm going to hold your questions until um, after Ralph gets done speaking, so I want to make sure he has enough time to, uh, to say what he needs to say, and then we can kind of answer them all um, at the end in one block. Um, I will just um, say you had mentioned that um, Julia and Tiffany came to your library and they did a blog post um, on our website about it. I posted a link to that blog post in the chat, so if anybody wants to... Uh, look at that and read it. It seems, looks like a very good, uh, well-written article, um, not to toot our own horn, um, <laughs> but, uh, but it's there if you uh, wanna read it. So um, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Ralph and um, take it away. Hi, thanks, Bob. Hello. Good, yep. good evening, everybody. I'm gonna try to put some slides on the screen here, mostly just to try to keep myself on track hopefully you can see this yep we can see it um, okay cool so there's a lot of text on some of these slides and i'm i'm not going to bore you with all the gory details but we are library link nj uh the statewide library cooperative um as bob said i'm the executive director there i've been in this position for coming up on a year 
at the beginning of July. Um, and we are very different than the other two, uh, you know, statewide services that you just heard from. Uh, we, as I'll get to in a little while, are charged with a number of different things, some very varied types of service. Um, um, but just a little background before we get started. Uh, again, we are a, a registered 501c3 nonprofit. Um, we exist because there are state uh, statewide library regional cooperatives listed as part of the New Jersey Library Network law in the state and the uh, regulations and administrative code. So we exist because of that. And we are funded like the other statewide services through the New Jersey Library Network uh, funding that is um, funded through the New Jersey State Library. So we are a member-based organization. Libraries of all types in New Jersey are uh, eligible to be a member of our, um, our organization. Uh, and we do not charge a membership fee. Uh, members don't pay any dues. And sort of like um, uh, a lot of, um, other professional organizations, for example, NJLA has an institutional membership, which offers some benefits to the staff that work at those libraries. Our membership works in a very similar way. So because your library, if you're a member of our organization, um, and odds are you are, especially if you're receiving our statewide delivery service, uh, you, you definitely are. Um, your staff, your library staff are eligible to participate in our programs and also sign up for an account on our website, get information off our website, participate in forums on the website and things like that. So again, we're member based, but it's a little bit confusing because really almost by default, all libraries in the state are either members or just eligible to be members. Um, and we can help you check if you're not sure if your library is a member or not. That's an easy um, thing for us to help you check. And you can even look that up on our website yourself. So again, there's a lot here. Uh, member based, it's over 2,500 uh, institutions in the state, that, which is pretty amazing. If you look at those numbers in the state, the number of library outlets, Bob, you can correct me if these numbers seem wrong to you, but you know, when we add up our, our numbers, you know, that's, that's about how many outlets we get in the state, including school libraries, academic libraries, special libraries, public libraries. And right now we have about 1300 voting representatives and that, and those voting representatives are the ones that are the, you know, that approve, um, you know, various things at our membership meeting. So I'm not going to go again, go through all of this. Uh, we have an executive board, 15 member executive board. Uh, they're uh, mostly, um, library directors at this point on our board from uh, various types of libraries in the state and from various geographic regions. Uh, we try to spread out, you know, the participation in that way. And there's also some mandated categories like we have to have two lay representatives on our board uh, that are not librarians or retired librarians. So they often are trustees or somebody you know in a field a nonprofit field so we also get some oh here we go the dogs are going to start barking um at least the uh, the one is not sitting here chewing anymore like she was um so again we, our board we have standing committees and the board is my boss so again there's a lot here uh we have five full-time staff and one part-time staff member as of right now you can see the positions listed here on the screen um, if you have questions about our website or technology related to things that we do, that's me since, um, you know, Balowick, uh, we have a programming and outreach coordinator and specialist who you may have seen or staff probably have uh, been in, met those folks um, that do arrange for a lot of our programming, C programming that I'm going to talk about in a minute. And we have the all important 
people that work in our business office. So as you can see, we're a pretty small organization. Um, I like to think that we get a lot accomplished for a very, very small group of people. Um, and we try to work, you know, very efficiently and, um, you know, just work together as a team. And again, we're currently right now, our offices are in Trenton uh, and the same, same building as the Talking Book of Rail Center. So let me, this is the bulk of really what I'd like to talk about. What is our focus as an organization? And really there's two halves to this. There are the services that we offer for libraries and institutions. And then in a few minutes, I'm gonna talk about the services that might be more focused towards individuals and individual library workers. So the number one thing that people tend to think of when they hear library link, if they know who we are, is the statewide delivery service. And that is the service that moves materials around the state through ILL. So if you request an ILL of a physical item in the state from your library, you go in your library, they don't really have what you need, but they find it at another library in the state. We manage the contract with the vendor that does that physical last mile delivery. Um, currently, right now, we're in some end of negotiations, wrapping up, and we'll be able to announce, hopefully, by the end of the month and hopefully by our membership meeting next week, um, officially that this new contract is in place. But that's the main thing that we do. So we do the customer service for that. If your library has a problem with delivery, some type of problem, uh, other requests um, like, you know, letting us know that your library is going to be closed for whatever reason, your holiday hours, there's materials that are used as part of this delivery system, like bins and bags and things. You contact us for help for, for those types of things. And all that is done through our website. Uh, primarily. So the other things that we we have been doing are statewide initiatives like this uh, Top Cats initiative. I, I honestly don't, I was the chair of this and I don't remember what exactly what every letter means, but it was basically the response a couple years ago during the pandemic when we realized that uh, kind of a grassroots effort that libraries really needed help in figuring out best practices for dealing with the virus, uh, reopening their libraries, policies, all different types of things. So we put together a group statewide initiative for that. Um, and I'm also uh, partnering with this with the state librarian and uh, the executive director of the New Jersey Library Association on an equity, diversity and inclusion initiative in the state. And we're in the process of pulling in other partner organizations like the Library Trustees Association, like the New Jersey Association of School Libraries, um, Vail, the Academic Library Group, I'm missing people, I'm sure, where we're gonna, where the plan is that we're gonna continue to get together and begin talking about how as institutions, libraries as institutions in the state can have equity, diversity and inclusion, um, go throughout their whole organization from their, you know, purchasing policies, hiring policies, collection development, keeping all those things in mind. So we are welcoming um, institutions for everyone. So that's the kind of the bottom line there. Uh, another uh, thing that we offer is uh, staff training subsidies. Um, I was just pulling this number up earlier today. I believe this in the past year, in this fiscal year, which we're wrapping up at the end of this month, we offered over $15,000 worth of, uh, of sub training subsidies, professional development kind of day type training subsidies to 32 institutions in the state and that impacted about 800 library workers. So, you know, we're taking the funding that we're getting from the state have earmarked a certain amount for these subsidies and libraries can get up to $500 to do some kind of staff development at their organization. And they can choose the trainer or they can pick from a menu of, of trainers that we have. Um, so it's another way, you know, kind of we're helping the institution. We also have been offering um, most recently a contract award type grant program uh, last a couple years ago, right before the pandemic started, we received $50,000 from EBSCO 
as a donation, you know, EBSCO, the, the database vendor. And uh, we pass that along to our members uh, through what we're calling, what we call the Ready for Anything grants. And we asked libraries to apply and tell us what they needed, what they wanted to do to face the next big challenge. So these are projects like everything from CPR training and shelter in place type training for their staff all the way through charging stations um, and things like that. So we're gonna be hopefully doing more of that in the future. One of my goals is over the next year is to begin looking for more outside funding. Hopefully we can pass along uh, you know, and do more of that kind of thing. Another thing that we're getting back into is offering discounts, uh, working with vendors to offer discounts for our members. We were recently able to uh, work with EBSCO to put together uh, an additional discount on some of the things, a uh, couple of the databases that unfortunately, you know, the state uh, wide database uh, funding ran out for, is gonna be running out for at the end of this June. So by working with EBSCO, we're able to, you know, hopefully if libraries are able to pick up those databases and pay for some of it on their own, they're gonna get a little bit extra of a discount by being our members. Um, and we have a couple other things on our website as well. And there's a, another one that I've been negotiating with, but I don't wanna mention what it is right now because I'm not done with it yet. So, um, and lastly on this slide are subsidies for partner organizations. We do things, um, for example, we sponsored the New Jersey Library Association Conference this year as a gold sponsorship level. Uh, we you know, had a booth at the conference, so we were able to do some outreach there, um, did some presentations. Uh, that funding also sponsored a, a pre-conference that talked about equity and diverse, uh, equity, diversity and inclusion in their library and participants came away with the ability to do an assessment at their library to see how they can begin to move forward in this area. Uh, we also, so this is other partner organizations and one of them is the Library Trustee Association. So if there was ever a conference or a virtual conference, we could, we could help sponsor that. Okay, so shifting gears, what are the what are the services that focus more on library staff and the primary primary area in this is what we're i'm kind of calling now learning opportunities traditionally this has been called continuing education or professional development but our very small staff uh, does a lot of a lot of work and a, you know, a lot of heavy lifting to contact you know various presenters and to do webinars and and other like themed type of trainings that are free um, you just need to sign up for it uh, they can include all types of topics um, but we really look for things that are current trends in the library world and to help get people you know int you know learn a little bit more about something get them started in an area and and begin to you know increase their knowledge and we're really working hard too to not just pick topics that may be of interest to the professional librarian, right? The person with the master's degree. We're gonna be working also to, you know, do a lot of core things, hopefully in the next year or two that will meet the needs of people on the front line and, and who work in libraries. Uh, last year, we ran an information equity conference. We're gonna be doing a similar conference this fall as a virtual conference. Uh, along the lines of uh, access to information, uh, equity and access to information, um, you know, similar type of topic, but really focusing on, you know, ease of access uh, in various ways to library services. So look for that coming up in the fall. The skill sharing conversations are focused conversations where we have an expert come in and demonstrate a skill or, or give a very specific set of knowledge and it's all and it's a more of a conversational uh, thing where you can say, OK, well, that's great. How, how did you do that again? Can you demonstrate that again? So it's more of an informal thing. And we've done everything here. Most a lot of these are very tech oriented podcasting, uh, you know, and you know, other you know, tech skills, 
um, social media, communications, and, and all, there's a whole laundry list of topics of things. And a lot of these things we're going to also begin to uh, put uh, as an on-demand type of program. So uh, we have a YouTube channel, which we're beginning to put things up on. So again, library workers can access these things when they're available, because that's something we hear often that the folks may be on that work on the CERC desk. You know, I know for having been as a director at, at a library, you know, it's difficult to give your, your staff time sometimes to do, to to sit down and do professional development. You really have to be uh, you know, intentional about helping them carve out the time to do that. So we wanna give opportunities for people when, and encourage library supervisors and directors to, yeah, have your staff be trained, have them increase their knowledge. It makes libraries in New Jersey better as a whole if we're all kind of moving forward together in this way and learning. So. These are the types of things that that we're doing. And, and again, the last one I kind of want to mention there is we do the super super library supervisor series each half of the year. Uh, this is uh, the only thing that we really charge money for because there's a, an investment in paying for the presenters to do this. And it is a, a multi week um, four day, uh, you know, once every few weeks meeting and talking about different topics about how to be a supervisor. And it's really pretty highly rated. I went through it years ago. Um, so if your staff are looking for supervisory training, we can help you with that. And the, as you can see here, we also have the Mentor and J program that we run. Uh, the main thing that is happening through that program right now are lots and lots of informal meetups around different topics, library administration, parenting. Uh, there's a, uh, a, there are a, several uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion type meetups around, um, you know, just different interests. Um, so look for those on our website as well. And, um, the last thing here is our online forums that I mentioned earlier. If a library staff person wants access to our forums, you can read them. But if you want to participate, you have to have an account and we can help you set that up. So that very quickly, I have no idea what time it is at this point. A um, couple more things. Uh, if you are not registered for our spring membership meeting next Tuesday, especially if you're a voting representative for your library, please go to our website and register because we will be announcing our strategic plan, voting on our budget and our executive board slate for this year. And then we are running this summer, a summer book bash for library staff. Uh, you sign up, I'll go to our website, sign up for our newsletter right on the main page of our website, put your email address in. You get some more information here, but we have a number of really interesting author events um, uh, and panels and giveaways and things like that. This is summer reading for librarians in the summer. What a concept, right? <laughs> so I'm um, trying to do something fun. And this is where you can reach me. And that concludes my presentation. So thank you for listening. And my virtual door is always open if you want to get in touch with me. Thanks very much, Ralph. Uh, great presentation as always. Um, I, I noticed that uh, Steve was quite busy um, answering some of the questions and stuff. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to just uh, read some of them out just in case it would uh, help trigger some of the people's questions. Um, so uh, we have had a question that said, um, the status of Rutgers Special Collections and items via available via interlibrary loan. And uh, Orla said, uh, currently the Special Collections and University Archives are going undergoing a significant shift of collections. Recent flooding in that library prompted investigation into relocating many of their collections to protect and preserve. So unfortunately, much of the collection is currently unavailable. 
items in the SC, the Special Collections University Archives collection are non-circulating, but in the past we have provided portions of works electronically via ILL. Items that are currently visible, i.e. not affected by the move, in our catalog are eligible for article or chapter requests via ILL. And she gives the Rutgers University Libraries URL. So thank you very much, Orla, for that. Uh, next question from anonymous attendee. How many libraries are in Newark and do they have reference librarians? Or do they all have reference librarians? Have any closed recently or are slated to close? And Steve says, we have six libraries in Newark. The Clinton branch was forced to close recently due to a building issue, but we are working on reopening services in that area soon. They all have librarians, but we at the main library handle the bulk of the statewide reference questions. So thank you, Steve. Uh, Francis Ferry um, asks, I am interested in researching George McClellan as governor of New Jersey after the Civil War. Where best to start? And Steve says, I'd say contact the New Jersey room at njreference at npl.org. They will help you find your way and give you a sense of what resources we have. And Jeremiah Halu says, uh, I should visit the New York, New York Public Library again, especially since 60 years ago. I worked there as I attended college. A wonderful building and place. Great to be reminded of that place. And Steve says, definitely visit. We would love to have you. And if you do, please visit the second floor reference area and say hi, and also visit the New Jersey room. Thanks for writing, Jeremiah. Uh, and last, uh, Cynthia Slade says, asks, um, is there a cost for questions that originate outside of New Jersey? And Steve's uh, answers, if it is a New Jersey specific question, like, which it usually is if it originates outside of New Jersey and you're calling a New Jersey library, um, our New Jersey room does charge a fee for deep research. See here, and he links a, um, a page on their website um, from the New Jersey Information Center and um, has some, probably has a rubric for costs and things like that, I would imagine, right? Um, and again, Steve has posted in the chat the um, PDFs of the one pager and brochure that he mentioned during his talk. Um, other than that, it is just past eight o'clock. Um, there's no other questions in the queue. Um, Michelle or Pat, do you have anything that you want to say for the good of the group? Not I. Pat? Pat is having internet issues. Um, Verizon is coming to her house. I, I apologize. No Tomorrow problem. To fix them, but that mm. doesn't help me. Uh, no, I don't have anything I want to thank all our answers for sharing that information. So Pat has turned into a Cylon. Um, and there is so much. There you go. Thank you, all our. Hmm? Nothing. Yeah, it, I'm all sorry. Your you're roboting out there a lot. Um, it, That's okay. It, it, I'm done. I'm done. It's okay. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, but yeah, it it um, was great having you all here. Um, you in the audience, and especially our speakers, uh, Ralph, Orla, and Steve. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time, and especially the time um, during a, a, a weekday evening. Um, it really uh, means a lot, especially to our trustees. And um, anybody else doesn't have anything else to say, I'll say thank you very much for attending. And I will um, try to get the uh, dates for the next um, July, probably going to be a combined, another combined directors and trustees check-in um, as soon as possible. So uh, you all can have time to register. Um, this recording will be up on our YouTube page, um, hopefully tomorrow. Um, and with that, good night and see you next month. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night.